What's up guys, I am the Longness Muster and I feel like a total loser and I'm mad at this editing software that I'm using, but I'll tell you about why I'm a loser first. So we're on the North Pole map and we're playing in poppable mode and I keep underestimating the sheer difficulty that this mode actually brings forth. Um, I forget that the developers, when they made this game mode, people were getting bored with this game and they were saying that it's too easy and the extreme maps aren't even extreme and blah 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 hard is too easy so they decided that they were going to add in another game mode to really amp up the difficulty and they definitely amped up the difficulty I'm not saying that this map gave me a lot of trouble this was my fifth attempt but I hadn't played through this map before I started recording it so I do have little little snippets of uh, slip ups here and I do end up losing towards the end but I do that multitasking exit the game and come back thing to resume um, which some people have called me a cheater for. I don't really consider that cheating, but I won't get into that now. I have an entire video on that topic on my channel already. So, go and talk about the gameplay here. Um, that first Dart Monkey, not in the best spot. I probably should have put him more to where he could cover uh, more of the track, but I put him there because he had two different pathways uh, that he could look down and snipe through groups of the balloons. Um, I did let one slip and had to drop a spike stack, which you guys should know, I really don't like doing that. Um, I think spike stacks are a total, uh, I don't know if there's a word for it, I think they're really not worth it. Obviously they cost 25 little monkey dollars and they only pop 10 balloons, so they're obviously not cost effective, and I don't really like relying on those because they suck away your money very quickly and don't pop all the balloons that you need them to, but they do come handy in a pinch, and so I was thankful to have them there. That first vacuum, is going to be first the first of many of a small army that's going to be stationed right there next to those left gingerbread houses and I'll tell you why that is not the best idea you definitely want um, the vacuums kind of spread out um, I think um, well I, the reason I put them all together like that is because I wanted them to all be affected by one village and just that one village because for whatever reason, I was cheap or something. Like I said, I, this is my quote-unquote first playthrough of the map, so I really wasn't all that prepared. But I think that, that I should change the strategy to have two villages. Um, I mean, at least on this map, two villages. Uh, one, you know, where I'm going to end up placing this first one here in a little bit, and one a little further back, probably by uh, between those, uh, the last and that second to last little gingerbread house on the left. I think that'd be a better idea and have those vacuums kind of spread out between them than to have them all grouped up because uh, in the later rounds when it's almost pure moabs and pure BFBs they like stop completely stop caring about the actual balloons that they're sending and only care about those moab class and so many of them cannot be handled by the vacuums and there is one specific reason why they can't do that and that is because I do not have that big balloon sabotage lab upgrade I really think that that is now probably one of the most important upgrades you can get because it definitely decides the late game for you. I think I said in my last video that the BFBs will get taken by a vacuum but they won't completely die of from that vacuum's first initial I don't know, sucking time or whatever, I don't know. Uh, basically the vacuum sucks up a BFB and it spits it out before it's completely dead but it still it has minimal health at that point but it's still on the board which means another vacuum either along the way or that same one that had it the first time has to take it back and then uh, strip off the rest of that health and then spit the four moabs back out and I think with the 20% drop that the maxed out um, big balloon sabotage lab upgrade gives that the vacuum will be able to take out the BFB in one go rather than having to spit it out and that could really reduce the amount of vacuums you need. I, w I would still recommend having um, as many as I'm putting. I think I end up with 10 or 12. I can't quite remember. But I would definitely recommend having that same amount. But it would definitely, for sure, it will help um, with those later rounds. And I won't, like, you won't have to put towers later on in the, in the track like I do. Um, I mean, I ended up with. 10,000 or so dollars left over for when I had the strategy set up so it wasn't 
like the biggest hassle, but I don't like having to um, modify things at the very end, especially after I have after I've lost and come back. So this basic strategy is just like um, it has been before. With the ice tower set to Arctic Wind and the glue gunners, I'll have them placed um, a little later on. They hit all the balloons as they come in, and the balloons get slowed while the glue eats away. And any Moab obviously can't get glued, so it just runs right past all that and gets taken by the vacuums. That is the general strategy that I run with. So now that that's explained a little bit, I'm going to tell you why I'm mad about my editing software. Um, I use kind of a low-end editing software. I got it for free because I'm a pirate, and it's kind of okay. It's not the best, but it has this narrate function, and I just got a new microphone, and I thought, well, this will be a lot more convenient than doing what I was before, um, which was I had my video camera just set up and like on in front of me, and I would talk into that and then put the video into my program, unlink the audio from it, and then add it to my video. That's a little more work than what I'm doing now. This narrate function is really handy, but I got through completely narrating this video, um, and it sounded good to me. I didn't slip up. A lot of times I pause, and it's really frustrating, and I'll stutter, and I sound like a fool, but I had it all really worked out. I was really proud of it, and then I, for some reason, it pulled the narration audio that I did for my last video and put that into the video instead so the audio I had just recorded didn't even go into the video which is really frustrating so I had to you know delete the one from yesterday make sure it wasn't in the little folder full of files I guess and re-record it so that's what I'm doing right now I'm re-recording it and it's a little extensive but I think it's worth it to put a lot of work into something you enjoy doing anyways uh, back to the gameplay here. I have the towers that I'm going to use basically set up. Um, that village on the bottom is 2-2. Two, two. You really don't need it to be 2-2. Two, two. I don't know why I did that. I think it's because... Um, yeah, because I'm OCD. And I accidentally clicked on the left pathway, and I thought, well, I might as well upgrade it again. And that's kind of a waste of money, but I have plenty to spare with those farms I set up in the beginning. So, the reason that village is there is so those those um, glue gunners get camo detection and that makes it to where they can smack every balloon that comes by them with a lot of camo and that also gives that ice tower not a lot of camo a lot of glue that also gives that ice tower the ability to detect camo so it will slow them down because otherwise they would just run right through and the vacuums would get preoccupied and miss some moabs and it's just a it would be a big mess of losing and frustration and everything so one thing I wanted to mention is that I have determined that in poppable mode is basically divided into two like distinct sections of the game. The first is the first few rounds, obviously. Um, I would say rounds 1 through 46, which is when the first Moab shows up. You know, since that's all balloons, you really only have to focus on getting your balloon defense set up. And uh, that's where the, you know, the farms come in really important. You gotta get those as early as possible because having one farm one round earlier can really change the game later on. And so, having the first few rounds are just setting up everything, and once you have that set up, it's basically letting it run. You don't have to worry about any more balloons or anything, as long as you keep adding vacuums and stuff to take away all the moabs that come into play later on, you're pretty much golden. Um, I kept telling friends when I was doing this strategy, um, I would you know take it with me, take my iPad with me and uh, work on stuff. And I kept telling them that once I have this strategy set up, it's impossible for me to lose. That's not true at all. Um, having those vacuums is very important, but like I said before, I think having them more spread out would be a lot more handy, um, especially from round 81 through 85 is way more Moabs and BFBs than regular balloons. And because we have our balloon defense really set up, we don't really have to worry about that. And... Um, so there's a lot of Moabs that just charge right through, especially on round 84, where it's just a stream of Moabs with a few BFBs sprinkled in. And my vacuums can take care of all those Moabs very, very easily, but when the BFBs show up, and because they can't really take them down in one, I don't know, one suction 
it's a unit of measure, one suction, then uh, it really backs up a lot of the things. You can see this is round 84 right here. You can see how easily my balloons are getting overtaken. And the one mistake I easily could have fixed this with is having um, another glue gunner right there, you see, to the right uh, as soon as it comes back because I'm a scrub and had to restart this. Right to the right of that ice tower um, where it doesn't have to shoot through balloons. I think that was a problem with the glue gunners on bottom. They were trying to shoot through balloons to um, get those ones that were further ahead. And so that glue gunner right there that I just placed um, takes care of all these balloons that get past. Not every map is going to be able to have that luxury. And that's what makes that's part of the thing that makes this an easy map is that balloons can or uh, towers can easily you know shoot at two different pathways. And so I'm gonna have to really work on that. But because I was scared that I was gonna lose again, I uh, upgraded my spike factory to the spike balls thing, so it's three two, and I put in one of those big tornado wizard guys to blow back balloons. But that last round was handled with ease because I was scared and overprepared for it, and that's exactly what you should do. You should overprepare for rounds because it's a lot more difficult than you might think. So thanks for watching. We'll be back next time with the patch map, and I'll see you then.